I'm Dr. T and welcome to my office. So the day has come. It is time to build your first course. Now, of course, two scenarios could be happening here. One, the time is to build your first course because it's in a week or two. You potentially just got the job or your department chair is like, hey, so-and-so just quit. You're taking their class. Uh, in which case, the textbook is probably going to be your friend. Uh, not a particularly great friend, but your friend. Uh, most textbooks, at least in the STEM field, will come with things like pre-prepared PowerPoints. They're eh, but they beat nothing. And they come with test banks, which are eh, but they beat nothing. And so this is a great place to start. You can jump on those, get rolling, and then that will give you time to kind of refine things as you go. And also and ways to think about the class for next time you teach it. Now, uh, if you are recreating a class because it was eh, or if you are getting a class and you've got time to prepare for it and time to do this right. Because keep in mind, teaching is a front-loaded activity. Grading, that's back-loaded. But teaching, that's front-loaded. So if that's the case, then where do you start? And where you start is typically where do you want to go? What is your goal for the class? What are the students trying to learn? What are the learning objectives? Learning objectives are kind of the fancy way of saying the goals of the class. Now, uh, there's a couple of philosophies on learning objectives. There is one philosophy that I've heard batted around where the idea is to take uh, very high level ideas, uh, two or three, maybe four for the course, potentially less, and structure the course around these ideas. These might be to better appreciate the functioning of this or that within your field, or the intricacies of this or that within your field. Uh, however, those aren't all that helpful when setting up the course. They, they are helpful, don't get me wrong. They might help guide units or guide patterns within your course, but they're not going to help you on the day-to-day -day level. What you want to do is start getting a series of much more granular learning objectives, much more specific skills that you wish the students to learn. Things that would be covered within several minutes potentially worth of lecture, maybe over several PowerPoint slides, something you could devote a few parts to a test to. Maybe if you have an active learning activity, something that that active learning activity might focus on uh, potentially exclusively. Active learning activities usually can only do a couple of these learning objectives. So how do you do it? Well. What you want to do is start scrolling through your textbook, start thinking about what you want this course to do, what skills those students need, and then the typical format of a learning objective uh, kind of structures as students will be able to blank the blank. That last blank is that specific goal. So for myself, I might say something like students will be able to calculate formula weight uh, from a chemical formula because I am a chemistry instructor. Alternatively, I might say something like students will be able to name ionic compounds. Now that one actually is kind of a broad topic. I might want to narrow that down to students will be able to name simple ionic compounds. Students will be able to name ionic compounds containing polyatomic ions and so on and so forth. Each one of these I could imagine maybe two or three test questions to assess that particular learning objective. Uh, and I could cover in a few minutes worth of lecture or maybe uh, as part of an active learning activity. So relatively granular, although not you know, incredibly specific. I wouldn't be saying students will be able to name ferric chloride. I'm not, not wanting them to name ferric chloride, but I want to be a little bit more broad than that. Uh, so depending on your field, it will depend, of course, exactly what you're thinking about for each one of these. Uh, generally speaking, though, for most of my classes, there are several pages of these. I'm looking at maybe... 10, 15 of these learning objectives per hour of class, um, depending on, once again, how I'm teaching the class, what the particular class is. Lots of variabilities. Your class will be, well, your class, so things will vary. Now, when dealing with these, I should also point out there is the first blank, and that is uh, a verb describing, well, how well do you want the students to be able to know this? To what level are they learning this? And one way to think about this is Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy is not perfect, nothing is perfect, but it's an interesting model for looking at the way we learn stuff. And the idea is you start taking in facts at the bottom, and as you take in facts, you then start to understand them, and then be able to apply them, and then analyze and move on up the pyramid. There's actually a couple of different pyramids 
uh, because, you know, thinking is weird and, you know, we're not a computer. We don't know exactly how we work, but we got some ideas. So the goal here is that when you're looking at your learning objectives, is this something you want the student simply to know? Is it a fact that they need to basically memorize? That would be a bottom level one. Is it something that they need to, you know, utilize? Is it a skill they need to utilize? Something like calculating the formula weight from earlier. That would be kind of mid-grade. Is this something that they need to take and take other information that they know and synthesize a, a new idea and new thoughts from? That would be a higher level learning objective. Now, it depends on your class uh, ends up being what kind of balance you have uh, with these learning objectives. A lot of STEM classes are going to be fairly heavily weighted towards the bottom of this pyramid. We're teaching the model uh, that's relevant for our particular discipline. Uh, other disciplines will move very quickly into synthesis and evaluation. What your class is doing and what level you're doing is very much dependent on you, your students, your class. What are the objectives there? Uh, there is kind of a push for thinking, oh, we need to be top level learning objectives. That is important for some courses, but other courses, you got to build a foundation. You can't build a roof before you build a foundation. Uh, so it depends entirely on what your class is. Now, once you've gone through and you've got your several pages of learning objectives, then it's time to actually start building the rest of the course. And that will be for other videos. Until then, have a wonderful time and best of luck.